so let's shift gears completely and, and, and start uh, the discussion about specific genotypes and mirroring what we've seen in the uh, advanced non-small cell lung cancer space without genotypes, there has been exceptional advances over the past 12 to 24 months that has altered the treatment paradigm. And of course, EGFR is no exception. Uh, EGFR is around 15 uh, percent of our patients with non-small cell lung cancer, adenocarcinoma. Uh, we of course know that first and second generation TKIs outperform chemotherapy in this patient population in terms of response rate and progression-free survival and perhaps underrepresented quality of life. Um, but we have uh, new data uh, that has come out in the past uh, 12 to 24 months. Um, and Ram, you were instrumental in leading this trial. Do you want to talk about the, the phase one and the flora experience? Um, uh, with osimertinib and EGFR mutant lung cancer? Sure. Uh, I think this is an area, once again, where advances are coming in very fast to lung cancer. Uh, EGFR mutations are present in approximately 15% in the Western population, about 40% in the Asian patient population. And when you look at the whole landscape of EGFR mutations, we're now dicing that as well. You have the common mutations, which are the exon 19 and exon 21s. They account for about 85% of all EGFR mutations. And then the rest of them are the less common mutations, which are not typically associated with being sensitive to EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibition. So when we look at the exon 19 and 21s, the most common mutations, the standard of care there is shifting very fast. We, for a long time, had erlotinib and gefitinib as the approved options. These are the first generation drugs that have a response rate of about 60%, median PFS of about 10 months. Then came the second generation drugs, Jafet, sorry, afatinib and uh, now more recently dacometinib. These are irreversible inhibitors. They seem to have an advantage over erlotinib or jafetinib, but they also have more adverse events in the form of skin and gastrointestinal toxicity. What's most exciting for me, not just because I was fortunate enough to lead the trial, but also because of the fact that osimertinib belongs to a new generation of drugs that are very specific to the mutant receptor. Uh, in other words, the selectivity of the drug to the mutant receptor compared to the wild type receptor is much higher than the first and second generation drug, so you see less toxicity. In the phase one study with osimertinib, which was initially being developed specifically for the T790M mutation uh, acquired resistance mechanism, we also treated 60 patients in the first line setting. And we saw that the response rate was close to 80%. The median PFS was approximately 19 months. And that really fueled the FLORA study, which was a head-to-head -head comparison of osimertinib given at 80 milligrams per day, comparing it to either erlotinib or gefitinib. And that study has now been published in the New England Journal. We saw a statistically so significant improvement in progression-free survival from about 10 months in the control group to approximately 19 months for patients treated with osimertinib. The hazard ratio was 0.46. We also saw that there was a greater effectiveness against brain metastases with osimertinib. And I think that's an important point for our audience to keep in mind because brain metastases are common in EGFR mutated patients. Mm -hmm. So osimertinib provided better systemic control, provided better CNS control, and was also better tolerated. So we now have a new standard of care in the United States and slowly in the other parts of the world as well. The US FDA approved osimertinib as first line therapy about eight months ago now. Uh, and more and more patients in our clinics are now getting first-line osimertinib. Uh, we still have not seen the mature survival results of the FLORA study, but when we looked at the uh, initial analysis, the hazard ratio was 0.63, favoring, not statistically significant at this point, because the maturity is low, but favoring uh, osimertinib in that setting. Now, when the full survival data come, uh, we will learn even more about what is the impact on the disease biology at a larger level with osimertinib. For now, I think osimertinib is perhaps the best EGFR TKI in the class and is moving into the first line space. Now, if there are patients who have not received osimertinib in the front line setting, like they got gefitinib or erlotinib, when they progress, I think testing for T790 is critical because about 50, 60 percent of them will have the T790 mutation. You can start with the blood. If you find T790 in the blood, you can give them osimertinib a second line. If you don't have T790 in the blood or you don't have access to blood, then tumor biopsy testing for T790 is the standard approach. Mm -hmm. And there, when you give osimertinib a second line for T790 positive disease, the response rate is about 65%. 
the median PFS is approximately 10 months. We have now phase three evidence that it's superior to chemotherapy in the second line setting for patients with T790 positivity. So there are two indications for osimertinib. First indication was in the second line setting. Now more and more uh, shift towards the first line setting is happening, uh, so definitely in the US. Um, so before I get the global perspective, one question related to what you just talked about sequencing, and this has come up in our tumor boards before, yeah. patients who are on a first generation TKI in which you can't identify the T790M, would you still consider giving osimertinib in the absence of T790M? You know, we have response rates in the 23 to 25 range, not that far off from what chemotherapy does. Um, is that ever a consideration or is it really still the paradigm T790M only in the resistant setting? If I know for sure after testing tumor or blood and both, if the T790 is negative, my approach is to go to chemotherapy. And we all know that there is something called the reintroduction response phenomenon. If you've been off of an TKI for a few months, coming back with an EGFR TKI will result in the response in a subset of patients. Mm -hmm. So that's the setting where I would reintroduce osimertinib after they've had chemo or something else. Come in back to it. Okay.